Welcome board members. The boardroom is open and today on Shelf Talk, we're talking about the bidding auction set collection game, Ra. The game of Ra takes place over three different epochs. The epochs represent eras in Egyptian history. On your turn, a player is either going to play a tile to the auction board, or invoke Ra to start an auction, or play a, uh, play a god tile to take any one tile from the auction board to their play area. Let's take a look at all the components and then talk about what a round looks like and what winning looks like. So here we have the game board, the auction track, the raw track, the sun that goes in the middle. Here's the raw figurine, and all the different suns sorted by a chart in the rule book per player count. So this is for two players. You also have victory point tablets here. Each player starts with 10 victory points. You'll see why that is in just one moment. On your turn, you can, you can either draw and place a tile in the auction track, or you can invoke Ra by starting an auction, or you can play a god tile to take any one tile out of the auction track. Let's take a look at the different tiles. There are pharaoh tiles. At the end of an epic, which is a round, you will score five points if you have the most pharaohs, and you'll lose two points if you have the least number of pharaohs. Civilization tiles. Civilization score if you have different civilizations. So three different will get you five points, four different will get you 10 points, and five different would get you 15 points. Monument tiles. Monument tiles score both if you have different types or multiples of the same type. If you have seven different monuments, you'd get 10 points. Eight different monuments gets you 15 points. Three of the same monument gets you five points. Four of the same gets you 10 and five of the same gets you 15. There are oasis tiles that will get you one point each as long as you have also one flood tile. There are god tiles, which we talked about. You could play a god tile and take any one of these tiles on the auction track, returning your god tile to the game box. If you didn't play a god tile and it's face up in your play space at the end of the epic, you'll get two points per god tile. There are coin tiles. These are worth three points each. There are also raw tiles. Now, if you draw a raw tile, it doesn't go into the auction space, yet it goes into the raw track. The farthest left. Since this is set up for two players, it'll go here on the two-player space. And if this track is full, it will end the epic immediately. No auction will happen. All the tiles in the auction space will go to the game box Face down. Anytime you do draw a raw tile and it goes to the raw auction track or the raw track, you will start an auction immediately and players will bid using their sons to get all of the tiles in the auction space. And it's not a pick and choose. And why that's important here, I'll tell you right now, there are also disaster tiles. If you draw this disaster tile, it's the funeral disaster. You notice it has the same color as the pharaoh here in the green. You would Take all the tiles, and you would lose two of your pharaohs to this disaster. The unrest disaster tile would force you to lose two of your civilizations. The drought tile disaster tile would force you to lose two of your floods first, then Niles. So you need the flood to score the Niles, so this is taking away the floods. So that could be a very, very disastrous tile if you were going for floods and Niles um, in that case. Then earthquakes. Earthquakes take away two of your monuments. So be wary when you are bidding on auctions that have disasters. If you don't have any of tiles that has that disaster, it could be a very good auction for you. When you're ready to start bidding on an auction, you take your sun tile and place it on your side of the board. Here's the six. Your opponent can then use one of their suns as long as it exceeds the number of the sun played before it, let's say they play an eight, thus winning this auction. The player that played the six will get the six back. The player that played the eight will win all of these tiles. They'll also claim the sun in the middle for their own, face down in their play area. And at the end of the game, all of the suns that they've collected through the course of the game will be added up, and the sun, whoever has the highest sum of suns, which is very hard to say, Whoever has the highest sum of suns will get five points. Whoever has the lowest sum of the suns will get minus five points. 
So that's it on how you score on raw. Let's talk about my final thoughts. I like raw. I like raw a lot. I'd play it anytime anybody asked if I want to play a game of raw, I would say yes. It's a pretty simple auction bidding, set collecting, math manipulating game. I think knowing when to bid early on sometimes just for the sun, if it's a high valued sun in the middle, you bid early, take a couple of cheap tiles and go for the sun that's in the middle of the board so that you can have the highest sum of suns at the end of the game is a great option. Uh, knowing when to track those disasters if they don't affect your play space at all, then bid really high for that track because you're going to reap all those tile benefits and a lot of people won't bid on tracks that have disasters that will affect their play spaces. Uh, the one thing to kind of want to try to master is do you go for set collections of different or, or set collections of multiples of the same for the monuments? I think that's, that's part of the fun, in my opinion, of Ra is choosing your path to victory. Do I want to keep the god tiles and keep them for their uh, victory points toward the end of the epics, or do I want to spend them to get the exact tile I need to get that matching set of five of the same monument for 15 points versus the two points for that one? That, for me, is the fun of the game. Calculating all of that while it's moving, and I say while it's moving because somebody else could be bidding on that same thing or against that same thing. You just don't know what's going on, so you got to like watch your players' spaces and watch yours and Keep track of your sons, both face up and face down. It's a lot of fun. So those are my thoughts on Ra. It has stood the test of time, and I think you should give it a try. Thanks so much for watching today, and as always, we'll catch you at the next boardroom meeting.